Blighty Boxing with Frank Warren and Queensbury here in Birmingham to kind of launch the uh, August 28th show at the uh, Utilita Arena, joined by Northampton's Ethan James with his West Ham top on. <laughs> cobblers, cobblers, sir. Northampton top, yeah? Northampton. How's things, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. You? Yeah, all good. So, uh, you mentioned to me earlier, it's been a little while and you probably you feel ready to jump back in. Yeah, it's been a good six months, good, good learning time. And now I'm ready to get back in there in front of everyone, in front of crowds, and see where it takes me, where see where it's been taking me. Mm. Talking about your last fight, we want to mention the last couple of rounds. I think you did six rounds, didn't you? Yeah. And you got the four in the bank, and all of a sudden you decided to sort of throw caution to the wind and start landing a few haymakers. So what, talk us through the thought process of that. Yeah. So obviously we know I knew I could box, and we just wanted to show mm. to other people that I have got an engine as well, and that I can, can change it up if I need to. So for the last two rounds, round or so, we just stuck it to him and went, went toe to toe. Were you perhaps a little bit wary or conscious of maybe people saying you're a non-puncher? Uh, probably a little bit, but I don't really think of it too much into it because all the way through my amateurs and through the start of my pro, I, I know I'm not a big puncher anyway, but with eight ounce gloves on, you can hurt anyone. And I'm in there to do my job, I'm in there to win and just get the win. Because you've always been about, been about bamboozling people, haven't you? Sort of clever footwork, you know, angles, all that sort of thing. And really, if, if that's your game, that's your game, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's what's been winning me fights all the way through from when I started, my feet work and my slick movement. So I just want to stick to that, keep, me, keep using it, don't neglect it. And then obviously when, when I grow and mature, my big punching will come and then hopefully get a couple of stoppages. Mm. You mentioned about a little bit of frustration about not being out for a little while, but you didn't have the worst pandemic, did you? I mean, was it two fights behind closed doors? Yeah, I got out. So I've been, I was out in September on uh, Josh Warrington's card and I was back out in March as well. So I've been, I've been active, probably not as much as I wanted to be, but I can't mind because obviously I'm getting out more than other people. Mm. So hopefully back on track and I'll keep the rolling every two months, three months to be back active. And in Birmingham and with crowds, so... Uh, how much of a Northampton army can we expect yeah, hopefully to descend on Birmingham? Yeah, we should have a couple, couple of hundred, two hundred people coming up. You do all right, be, don't you? Nice. Yeah, I'll sell a couple of tickets. Everyone behind me. We're a small town, but we're all close, so hopefully everyone's coming up. Sold 150 already, so... That's good, mate. Got, st still got time to get another 50 to come up. Mm. But it'll be, it'll be good to see everyone back there and hearing the sounds of everyone cheering. Do you have to arrange all the transport and all that as well? Yeah, we've got a coach on for some people, but obviously... Uh, it's right outside the train station for everyone this time, so a lot of people coming up, going on the night out afterwards. So I might have to go out and see them afterwards. <laughs> Shame. Yeah. You mentioned the, you mentioned the cobblers. Do you get up there very much? Uh, not not recently, because obviously they've only I think they've only just started and opened the stadium back up for people. But we've had a few of the cobblers boys come into the gym. We've had a few of the Northampton Saints lads come in the gym as well. It's like to have a couple of sessions with us. So they're all behind us and we're all behind them. So it's all close, all the sporting life, life behind Northampton, we're all close knit. Now, obviously the last since we last spoke face to face, just to recap on camera, um, the change of circumstances has been you moved from Bromley, the iBox gym, back up to your former amateur trainer. Um, tell us a little bit about the thinking behind that. Yeah, so obviously Al, Eddie and Paul, they're all good coaches. I enjoyed my time down there with them, but the travelling was just a lot. Like, it was a struggle for me and obviously they sort of understood. I was missing sessions, couldn't get there, couldn't train as much in a day. I was only getting to do like one session or two sessions. So obviously moving back was a better plan for me all around because I was getting more training time, I was getting to put more effort into my training and hopefully you'll see that coming on the 28th. Well people have probably got understand but potentially five hours of your day was spent on motorways wasn't it? Yeah so obviously it's bought, being, being the car's boring enough as it is when it's just travelling to the gym, let alone having to do it three hours there, three hours back, like three days a week which three days isn't a lot for a pro to train so obviously not getting enough training time and like spending most of my hours on the, on the, on the road than anything. But First of all you were thinking of moving there weren't you? Yeah I was going to move down there but my financial situation wasn't the best to move down there. I was going to move with my uncle but then he, he ended up moving as well so he, he, that didn't help but yeah so hopefully everything's just panned out for the best at the moment and we'll see where it goes. You'd have ended up having to do your own washing, your own cooking. Yeah, I'm not looking, wouldn't be looking forward to that. I'd no. have to grow up too soon. So the new gym, your, your old gym, tell us about that. It's um, 
Conway, isn't it? Um, yeah, James Conway. James Conway, yeah. yeah so we've got uh, it's a shoe box, we've got a couple of good lads in there. We've got me, we've got Kieran Conway, he's back out on the 9th of October on the Liam Smith Anthony Fowler card against JJ Metcalf, which will be a quality fight, another quality fight for him. Uh, we've got a few up and comers. We've got Ben Vaughan, who's signed with MTK, he'll be having his debut soon. We've got Kieran's brother, Ryan, he's having his debut soon the weekend after my fight. And then we've got a couple of other lads, we've got Dempsey, Madden, we've got Michael Stevenson, we've got Dan Lorenzo. We've got, we've got a good full Lively, gym. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we've got a few good lads all coming in and hopefully we're working together, doing well and we'll reach the same goals. So you kind of swap one young gym for another one? Yeah, we're, all young. we're definitely all young in this one. But I think the oldest, the oldest one is Dempsey, I, think. I, can't, I can't remember how old he is, but he's, he'll do alright. Anyone around your weight is there for uh, get some work in? Yeah, we've got... Um, got a few super lightweights, we've got me, we have Ben, there was another lad there at the time, he, but he's left now, he was a uh, super lightweight, so Jim's just filled with my weights, so I need to start moving around a bit, mm. going up and down. How old are you now? 20. 20. So is this beard going to be a permanent thing, is it? Yeah, I only, only come in in lockdown, so it's, it's staying. I don't like the baby face. The ginger beard? Yeah, it's alright. We're not dying it, we'll leave it ginger. Ethan, nice one mate, good luck, good to see you again. Cheers, thank you very much.